Deuteronomy chapter 13. If prophets, or those who divine by dreams, appear among you and promise you omens or portents, and the omens or the portents declared by them take place, and they say, Let us follow other gods, whom you have not known, and let us serve them. You must not heed the words of those prophets or those who divine by dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you, and to know whether you indeed love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. The Lord your God shall follow. Him alone you shall fear. His commandments you shall keep. His voice you shall obey. Him you shall serve, and to him you shall shall hold fast. But those prophets, or those who divine by dreams, shall be put to death for having spoken treason against the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery, to turn you from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall purge the evil from your midst." If anyone secretly entices you, even if it is your brother, your father's son, or your mother's son, or your own son or daughter, or the wife you embrace, or your most intimate friend, saying, Let us go worship other gods, whom neither you nor your ancestors have known, any of the gods of the peoples that are around you, whether near you or far away from you, from one end of the earth to the other, you must not yield to or or heed any such persons. Show them no pity or compassion, and do not shield them, but you shall surely kill them. Your own hand shall be first against them to execute them, and afterwards the hand of all the people. Stone them to death for trying to turn you away from the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, then all Israel shall bear, shall hear and be afraid, and never again do any such w- wickedness. If you hear it said about one of the towns that the Lord your God is giving you to live in, that scoundrels from among you have gone out and led the inhabitants of the town astray, saying, Let us go and worship other gods, whom you have not known. Then you shall inquire and make a thorough investigation. If the charge is established that such an abhorrent thing has been done among you, you shall put the inhabitants of that town to the sword, utterly destroying it and everything in it, even putting its livestock to the sword. All of its spoil you shall gather into its public square, then burn the town and all its spoil with fire as a whole burnt offering to the Lord your God. It shall remain a perpetual ruin, never to be rebuilt. Do not let anything devoted to destruction stick to your hand, so that the Lord may turn from his fierce anger and show you compassion, and in his compassion multiply you as he swore to your ancestors. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God by keeping all his commandments that I am commanding you today, doing what is right in the sight of the Lord your God. Deuteronomy chapter 14. You are children of the Lord your God. You must not lacerate yourselves or shave your forelocks for the dead. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. It is you the Lord has chosen out of all the peoples on earth to be his people, his treasured possession. You shall not eat any abhorrent thing. These are the animals you may eat, the ox, the sheep, the goat, the deer, the gazelle, the roebuck, the wild goat, the ibex, the antelope, and the mountain sheep. Any animal that divides the hoof and has the hoof cleft in two and chews the cud Among the animals you may eat. Yet of those that chew the cud or have the hoof cleft, you shall not eat these, the camel, the hare, and the rock badger, because they chew the cud but do not divide the hoof. They are unclean for you. And the pig, because it divides the hoof but does not chew the cud, is unclean for you. You shall not eat their meat, and you shall not touch their carcasses. 
Of all that live in water you may eat these. Whatever has fins and scales you may eat. And whatever does not have fins and scales you shall not eat. It is unclean for you. You may eat any clean birds, but these are the ones that you shall not eat. The eagle, the vulture, the osprey, the buzzard, the kite of any kind, every raven of any kind, the ostrich, the night hawk, the seagull, the hawk of any kind, the little owl and the great owl, the water hen and the desert owl, the carrion vulture and the cormorant, the stork, the heron of any kind, the hoopoe and the bat, and all winged insects are unclean for you. They shall not be eaten. You may eat any clean winged creature. You shall not eat anything that dies of itself. You may give it to aliens residing in your towns for them to eat, or you may sell it to a foreigner, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. You shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk. Set apart a tithe of all the yield of your seed that is brought in yearly from the field, in the presence of the Lord your God, in the place that he will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall eat the tithe of your grain, your wine, and your oil, as well as the firstlings of your herd and flock, so that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. But if, when the Lord your God has blessed you, the distance is so great that you are unable to transport it, because the place where the Lord your God will choose to set his name is too far away from you, then you may turn it into money. With the money secure in hand, go to the place that the Lord your God will choose. Spend the money for whatever you wish, oxen, sheep, wine, strong drink, or whatever you desire, and you shall eat there in the presence of the Lord your God, you and your household rejoicing together. As for the Levites resident in your towns, do not neglect them, because they have no allotment or inheritance with you. Every third year you shall bring out the full tithe of your produce for that year and store it within your towns. The Levites, because they have no allotment or inheritance with you, as well as the resident aliens, the orphans, and the widows in your towns, may come and eat their fill, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work that you undertake. Deuteronomy chapter 15 Every seventh year you shall grant a remission of debts, and this is the manner of the remission. Every creditor shall remit the claim that is held against a neighbor, not exacting it of a neighbor who is a member of the community, because the Lord's remission has been proclaimed. Of a foreigner you may exact it, but you must remit your claim on whatever any member of your community owes you. There will, however, be no one in need among you, because the Lord is sure to bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you as a possession to occupy. If only you will obey the Lord your God by diligently observing this entire commandment that I command you today. When the Lord your God has blessed you as he promised you, you will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. You will rule over many nations, but they will not rule over you. If there is among you anyone in need, a member of your community in any of your towns within the land that the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted towards your needy neighbor. You should rather open your hand, willingly lending enough to meet the need, whatever it may be. Be careful that you do not entertain a mean thought, thinking, The seventh year, the year of remission, is near, and therefore view your needy neighbor with hostility and give nothing. Your neighbor might cry to the Lord against you, and you would incur guilt. Give liberally and be ungrudging when you do so, for on this account the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all that you undertake. Since there will never cease to be some in need on the earth, I therefore command you, Open your hand to the poor and needy neighbor in your land. 
If a member of your community, whether a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, is sold to you and works for you six years, in the seventh year you shall set that person free. And when you send a male slave out from you a free person, you shall not send him out empty-handed. Provide liberally out of your flock, your threshing floor, and your wine press thus giving to him some of the bounty with which the Lord your God has blessed you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. For this reason, I lay this command upon you today. But if he says to you, I will not go out from you, because he loves you and your household, since he is well off with you, then you shall take an awl and thrust it through his earlobe, into the door, and he shall be your slave forever. You shall do the same with regard to your female slave. Do not consider it a hardship when you send them out from you free persons, because for six years they have given you services worth the wages of hired laborers. And the Lord your God will bless you in all that you do. Every firstling male born of your herd and flock you shall consecrate to the Lord your God. You shall not do work with your firstling ox, nor shear the firstling of your flock. You shall eat it, you together with your household, in the presence of the Lord your God, year by year at the place that the Lord will choose. But if it has any defect, any serious defect, such as lameness or blindness, you shall not sacrifice it to the Lord your God. Within your towns you may eat it, the unclean and the clean alike, as you would a gazelle or deer. Its blood, however, you must not eat. You shall pour it out on the ground like water.